I can 1171 here and in this video let's talk about magnets. I made a new tool let's run it called the Mags Master and this tool is to make your life easier when working with magnets. So instead of talking about it let's see some examples. Let's see I'm going to add a magnet to the hip this figure and right click, it opens the context menu where all the commands are, and I choose create magnet on the hip. And that it is, it has created a magnet there. So what I'm going to do is snap it to the center of the object and then make the snap also the zone to the center of the base. Now I'm going to select the zone and notice I'm, I'm doing all the magnet manipulation here instead of on the screen because as you can see there are a lot of things to select and it can be confusing to get the right thing selected. So I selected the zone which is this one and I'm going to increase the size. There you go. It can be difficult to control the size so we have four levels of Precision control. I'm holding the, uh, the control key while I drag, and you can see it, it, it gives me more control. All right, and then I'm going to drag it down about here, and I'm going to select the magnet itself, which is the big magnet red part over here. So, with that selected, I'm going to X scale. And you'll see only the part that was selected, which means the hip gets uh, affected by the magnet. And this is a new thing that I have added to my script that no other script could do until now, which is full control of the affected actors list. So opening this now, you have a full list with checkboxes where you can uh, check the parts you want. I'm going to select this here, and then the pelvis, the thigh, and the other one. And click OK. And boom. Now I'm affecting all these parts. And you'll notice the clothing doesn't, uh, doesn't follow, but that can be easily fixed. I'm going to right click here, and on the magnetizing, options, I'm going to ask it to magnetize everything that the figure is wearing. Once I do that, you'll notice, boom. Now, no matter how I modify uh, the figure shape, the, uh, the clothing will automatically follow, which is uh, how um, legacy figures like Victoria 4 used to work with magnetized clothing. Um, this is uh, High Wire Dawn. A uh, fully weight mapped figure, but we can still do the same things with magnet on her, which a lot of people don't know, which is why I love magnet so much. All right, so uh, now that my magnet affects the parts I want, I'm with the still with the magnet selected, I'm going to scale on the Z axis, as you can see here. Now the, the, the clothing follows. And with this, uh, you'll notice here on the uh, on the, the parameters, the controls section, uh, whatever I can drag the mouse over the values, and that is has the same effect as um, dragging the uh, the magnet parameters in Poser, which are these over here. So you don't even need to touch the parameters panel or try to select things on the screen. Once you have a lot of magnets or clothing on top of it, it becomes very difficult to select things. So I'm doing everything from this panel over here. As a matter of fact, let's dock it into Poser. And now it's part of the interface. And um, OK, I created my shape, which is the big hip. And now I'm going to small spawn a morph here on the morph section. I'm going to spawn a morph. I'm going to call this big hip. And once I click OK, two things are going to happen. First, 
my magnet is deactivated so it's not doing anything to the figure anymore and then it has created uh, morphs on the on the body parts i have selected uh, to apply this morph and if i switch to the body you'll notice it has also created a new master dial that i can use to control this morph straight from the body part and not only created the master dial let me show the parameters it has also set limits from zero to one and, and enforced them. Um, so that helps dialing so it doesn't go uh, beyond bounds. You'll notice now the clothing is not following anymore because the magnet has been deactivated. So what I'm going to do now is right click on the Ma Max Master, go back to Magnetizer and deactivate demagnetize all conformed so the the clothing conforms back and what i'm going to do now is to select the clothing on the figure and copy the morphs you can do this from figure where is the option copy morphs from right here and the figure is done and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to select none and click only the one I have created now, which is big hit. When I click OK, next time I dial this, um, let's go back to the figure body. Next time I dial the morph, the follow the, the outfit automatically follows. But now it's following the morph and not the magnet. As a matter of fact, I can even delete this magnet now because it has been already used and created a morph. And now I have a complete morph already set up on the figure. As you can see here, I, I can dial it straight from the body. I'm not using the magnet anymore. So let's continue. I'm going to zero this morph and I'm going to create another morph on the head. So select the head, right click here and create a magnet on head. There you go. And I'm going again to use the snapping option to snap the base to the object center. There it goes. And then I'm going to select the zone and scale it up a little bit like this and move it up about when the bottom is about touching the chin. That's about good. All right, now let's select the magnet itself and do some scaling. I'm going to go to the scale part here and scale it up. It's going to create kind of an alien head like this. I can even exaggerate a little more. There you go. You'll notice that the inner mouth and the, the eyes are not following. So we solve this the same way we did before. We add, we open the list of affected actors and only the head is selected right now. I'm going to expand this, include the eyes and uh, all parts of the inner mouth. And I probably should select the neck as well because I think it's affecting part of it there. Once I click OK, you'll notice everything jumps into place. There you go. Uh, now, if I, let's say, select the zone and move it up and down, you'll notice that every part of my selection from the list of affected actors are being are following the magnet, um, which is what we wanted. All right, let me scale the magnet a little more to make it a little exaggerated like this, and let's create a morph. So again. I right click, go to the morph section and click on spawn morph. I'm going to call this big head and click OK. Again, that does two things. You'll notice the magnet has been deactivated and the morph has been um, created on all body parts. I, I, I had selected in the list only those, not the whole body. And if I select the body from the figure, 
you'll notice I have another morph now called the big head. And if we look at the dependencies, you'll see only the parts I have selected from the list are being affected and nothing else, which is great. Um, um, only the, another thing that Toe is doing is only the morph dial, the master dial on body is visible and uh, the morphs on the subparts, which is all the affected parts um, on the head, the eyes, and the inner mouth, the morphs are automatically set to invisible. So if you're going to sell this morph, this is how the store expects you to uh, uh, it to be. So let's go back to body. We can dial this. So we have a fully function, fully functional morph created in seconds using magnets. All right, I'm going to delete this morph. And one last example I'm going to do here, which is what uses uh, symmetry. So again, let's select the body, zero this morph. It's important that you always zero all morphs when on creating new morphs so that the others don't get included. I'm going to select the color, create a magnet. Again, I'm going to right click and snap this magnet to the center of my selection. Awesome. Now I'm going to snap also the, uh, the zone to the base. All right, and now let's select the zone and do some scaling. I'm going to move it to the right uh, around, let me see, around here, and then scale it in the X axis. I'm going to make like a big biceps. Let's give it a try. I'm going to select the magnet, do, let's say, um, Y scale. And again, only the first part are selected. Um, the colors are affected, so I'm going to open the list of affected actors and include the shoulder and the forearm. Uh, probably need to select the chest too as, uh, as well, which is this one, because the chest too is being affected. So click OK. And now I have a smooth transition between uh, the affected parts. I'm going to look at the uh, top view, select my magnet, and scale on the Z axis as well. Let's go. There you go. So I like, have like a big biceps. All right, now comes the symmetry part. If I want to create this on the other side, exactly as I have it here, what I do is I right click and go to the symmetry part and create symmetric copy. So take a look. I have this um, magnet created on the on the left side, and when I I click the symm create symmetric copy, take a look what happens. It creates a magnet on the other on the other side automatically, and names names it with the symmetric side automatically and copies all the parameters to the other side symmetrically. So um, other things I can do with this is I can deactivate this magnet. I can activate it back. I can uh, do this for all or uh, the magnets as well, activate and deactivate. Let's say I want to zero the magnet, which means it gets this red part here and zeros that. So zero the magnet, so I, I, uh, all the deformations are zeroed, or even worse, um, I'm going to reset the magnet, which means all parts of the magnet are going to reset to defaults. All right, so it's now out of place and everything has been reset. Uh, what if I want, since this magnet has been created with symmetry, what I can do is select the first one and on the symmetry part, right here, copy symmetry to the other side. Once I choose this, take a look what happens. It has reposition in every part of the magnet on the other side uh, to be a perfect symmetric copy um, of the first magnet. 
Uh, mind you, this only works if you have created a magnet with symmetry, meaning that uh, it expects the magnet name needs to be symmetric, uh, like, like having left and right names. So the, this magnet thing can identify the other one. So if you come here and you rename this magnet, let's say Lex, uh, right color two, uh, that option I just did with uh, copy symmetry to the other side is not going to work because the names are not following conventions. But you can still do the same thing. Let's reset the other magnet. There you go. So it's not symmetric anymore. What I can still do is copy the values from the first magnet, select the second second magnet, and paste with symmetry. Let's do that now. And you see it has the same effect as uh, pasting symmetry to the other side, except that now you have to tell which, which magnet you want if the names don't follow conventions. Um, Another example I can do is I'm going to go back, I'm going to copy this first, the second, copy the values from the second magnet, and then reset uh, the first one. And I'm going to, the first one, the one that I have reset, and paste with symmetry. And what you'll see here is that I can do this either from left to right or from right to left. It automatically identifies what side of the figure you are, you are trying to copy symmetry. So um, the paste, sym uh, paste symmetric and copy symmetry to the other side, uh, they automatically identify to what side you are doing the symmetry to. You don't have to tell it, which is great. All right. So um, what I, if I want to create morphs out of this, what would happen is every magnet will create its own morph. So I would have, if you want to have split um, versions of this morph, like uh, uh, big biceps left and big biceps right, you just spawn the morphs as I showed before, one on each side. It will, it will create uh, left and right with whatever morph names you want, if that's what you want. But if you want to create one on both sides, what you do is you delete the other side, so come here and delete the other side, spawn a morph on only one side. There you go. I'm going to call this big biceps. And uh, it deactivated my, uh, my magnet. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move to body. This is the morph I have just created. Um, I have to show hidden parameters, select one of the affected parts here, and find the morph. Here it is, biceps. It's already set, and I'm going to edit. I have to right-click or just click this triangle here, either, either way works, and click on Edit Morph. Once it does that, it opens the morph too, and I'm going to mirror left to right. Click in this option here. You'll see that the morph now applies to both sides. I can close the the the, the, the tool now, and you'll see if I go back to the figure uh, body, and I can disable show hidden parameters now. This morph now affects both sides at the same time. If you wanted separate morphs, you could do as I said, the, like spawn a morph on each magnet, or you create like this and then uh, split between left and right, which is something Poser can do. So um, these are the actions you can do with magnets, like create a new one, delete, rename, save. Saves uh, allows you to save magnets to the Poser library or anywhere you like. Uh, the list of affected actors allows, as opposed to Poser, because Poser cannot do this, uh, allows you to view what ac what actors are currently affected and uh, add or remove, which was never possible with Poser until now. Now, continuing, you can copy uh, a magnet and paste it to any other magnet uh, with or without symmetry. You can zero or reset magnets, activate, deactivate, 
magnetized clothing, as I did before, makes the clothing follow any deformations you do with magnets. Uh, you can spawn morphs, delete morphs. For example, if I want to delete uh, big biceps, I just do that, and uh, it does two things. First, it removes the, the, the morph from the figure, including the one on body. If you look here, it's gone. And it reactivates um, the magnet. So now it affects uh, the figure again. Remember, um, when I spawn a morph, the, the tool automatically deactivates the magnet so I can play with the morph without being double applied by the magnet. And that's great. Um, snapping, I have shown that you can snap different parts of the magnet uh, to other parts of the magnet or the figure. And symmetry, which is a great way to work on only one side of the figure and create symmetry on the other side. So this covers more or less everything I wanted to show about the Mag's Master. And um, one new feature that uh, many people haven't seen yet is now the ability of disabling the uh, auto docking. So if that's this button here. If I click it, it uh, disables the button and you'll notice now you can no longer auto dock. And that was something people have requested and I'm now providing with my new scripts. If I enable it back, now I can dock it again. As usual with my scripts, you can always click the question mark button here at any time and that opens the the complete manual. So if you have doubts about uh, how something works, you can get your answers right here at any time by opening the built-in PDF manual. And that's what I wanted to show you. Thank you.